Dream a little dream of me. Welcome Kindreds, it's Jessica the Story Witch and this video is going to be a review of the Ostara Tarot. I've had this deck for about two years now and I think that's not long after it came out. Let me just check the date of publication actually. I didn't use it immediately when I bought it. Yeah, 2017, yeah, so I did buy it fairly soon after it came out because I really liked the look of it and I saved it for that first Astara and used it yeah I find I don't just use it around springtime because well as we go through I don't even though it's Astara tarot and ostensibly is kind of linked into that I don't actually find that it really is so I think that it can definitely be used at any point of the year. The outer packaging stuff does look kind of a starry with the colouring and stuff like that. But yeah, I don't find it a particularly spring-based deck, especially when we look at the imagery, which we will do as we go in. So it comes in this like magnetic closure. It's slightly unusual box because it is like a, a kind of different shape. It does look quite nice if you stand it up on your thing because it does say Ostara Tarot on the edge of it. It's got this little opening with the ribbon and stuff here. It's unusual in that, I'll show you from the front actually because it's, um, I put the camera quite close so you can see the pictures but it means you can't see kind of further out. It is created by four creators all working together which is really cool. Although one of the things I have found with this deck is I do prefer a couple of the artist styles over the others. <laughs> So there are certain suits because they each had a suit each which they illustrated and then they divided up the majors between them So they illustrated a couple of the majors each as well. Well a few of the majors each as well. So uh, Yeah, I that has definitely played into that but you know like in a deck There will always be some cards that you don't like as much as others. So that's just as it is So yeah, it tells you in the inside of the box Molly, Eden, Krista and Julia, four illustrators living in Vancouver, Canada. After meeting at art school and discovering a shared love for the occult, they decided to tackle the ambitious task of illustrating a tarot deck. Since then, they have delved into every corner of their trade. Their individual work ranges everywhere from comics to murals to children's books, and they continue to work on collaborative projects, which I thought was really cool as well. So I liked, I liked that idea of it being a collaborative project. I also really like this image, which is the High Priestess card. And yeah, there's a lot of things about this deck which I like. So it comes in this box. When it first arrived, it did have like a little cardboard spacer in here. But I got rid of that because it just used to get on my nerves. Because you basically have to tip the box up to get the cards out anyway. So it was just kind of pointless because I was just tipping it out every time I was using the cards. And so yeah, that was getting on my nerves. And what also is frustrating is what I would normally do with a box like this is I would put them on top of each other and put them in a bag and just keep them in the box but the box isn't actually high enough to keep the cards and the book so you have to kind of split the deck and put it like that and then put the book on top in order for it to to close properly so you know design things it is a different design from what you usually see which is kind of nice but there's a reason why that's not the usual design <laughs> so yeah the book is lovely it's not huge but it's definitely not a little white book it is really it's fully colored fully illustrated which is really nice it tells you who did which deck and then each of the cards has their own it has a color picture of the card and then it has the write-up with keywords reverse meanings and everything so it's not loads and loads of information but it's definitely enough to use because the images are so evocative as well so i find that you can really read into them really well and what is nice as well is for when you're flicking through is that it's got major arcana here and then when it gets into the minors it's got minor and it's also got a little picture showing you which minor it is so it's, it makes it easy to flick through and find which one you're looking for so so yeah that's cool so yeah, I like the book. The book is nice and the the meanings as well. We'll maybe we'll look up a couple as we go through to see what they've got to say about them. So I have organized these back into order, but this is where you'll see the problem with getting them out. It's not straightforward. <laughs> you know, first world problems, but it's a little bit annoying. So the this is the image on the back of the card. 
which is again I really love really love that the color is beautiful and the kind of the decay the death mingled in with the rebirth Ostara kind of theme as well so yeah I do love that and that was one of the things that drew me to the deck it's gilded the edition that I've got is got silver gilding it's got a little bit knocked around I don't know if that's being picked up on the camera because I use this deck a lot and so gilding does get knocked around especially when you're shuffling it and using it so yeah the cards are quite yeah and some of them are a little bit bent because I do use them I do use this deck a lot the cards are quite thick um which is fine now they seem to have almost when when they first arrived they felt like they were sticky and it, if you were trying to move one against away from the other they would like you know you'd have to kind of peel them away from each other so I actually individually like talcumed talcum powdered well I didn't use talcum powder because that stuff is toxic but you know like use powder on the cards and put them in like a bag and shook them all around and let them kind of have the powder and then I wiped it off with like a um, like a lint-free cloth and now I don't get that problem they do they they're fine now they're not at all I don't want to shuffle because I've <laughs> because I've put them in order, but there's no like sticking to each other now. They don't stick. They they slide nicely against each other, but they are rather thick. So cardstock wise, if you like a thicker a thicker cardstock, then this would suit you. It they don't it doesn't riffle that well, but you you can do it. But it it's it's not so easy because of the cardstock being so thick. So. Yeah, that's it's personal preference. If you like thick cardstock, then you might well be thinking, oh, that sounds just the sort of thing I like. <laughs> In which case, you know, that's one of the things I don't like so much about the deck, but I put up with because I really like the imagery. So, so yeah, that is, it is what it is. So I'm going to just flick through each of the cards and just show you all of them really and sort of say a little bit about what I like about this deck. So... The majors, like I said, are, are illustrated by a few, uh, each of the authors, each of the artists did a few each of the majors. And like some of them, I like more than others because of that. I love the fool on the broomstick. That is just so, so wonderful. And I also love, like when you see, like look at all these eyes on the magician. And like, there's a lot in these cards so that when you, especially with some of the artists, they really have got layers of meaning in these cards so I love looking deeper into that like look at all this snail imagery and then also we've got like water and water lilies which is also like that kind of connection to the unconscious I see that magician card almost it's almost like the high priestess you know it's got that kind of element of being in control of the elements but through gnosis through subconscious which I really I really love because sometimes the magician is almost like a kind of will a willful card using your will to control the elements and while I enjoy that kind of aspect of it what I like about this is it's almost well not almost it's kind of explicitly showing that in order to be truly in being able to control the elements you have to be in touch with them and so yeah there's I really really love that card and there's other cards in this deck that are some of my favourite renditions of that particular card as well. So High Priestess I like. I like that she's got her heart there. I like that you can't see her eyes. I like that she's almost got the kind of like antennae. And that there's still the, the lunar imagery is still there. But I don't love that card. Even though, you know, it's on the box and everything. Empress, you know. It's funny how, how Empresses you do get this kind of nest imagery in the growing. I quite like that she looks ageless almost or, or a bit younger which is interesting interpretation I think of the Empress and this Emperor card is like <laughs> slightly arousing I think and then you've got you know the Triska you've got lots and lots of occult imagery here and I think that is a fantastic way of of showing that this the Emperor is not just that kind of like overbearing controller of the man-made world the emperor is actually a he is in control of 
the the mysteries and the knowledge of the occult as well you know which then feeds into the hierophant which takes it to that step further of knowledge and wisdom even further and of book learning and teaching and access you know look at the layers in these cards it's just amazing and then some of the cards don't have so many layers i think that is to do with the different artists doing them so like the lovers they kind of blind as they often are but there isn't the angel on this card there's just lots and lots of light it's like almost like you're not always seeing everything clearly and it does link in with that two of swords which i find does link into that lover's card that kind of element of choice sometimes choice that you have to make with different information than just visual practical information if you see what i mean so even the cards that aren't so layered in meaning i find are interesting i don't think there's really what we'll see as I go through our, there's not like a card that I think, oh, I really don't like that card. You know, I do like, like how cool is that? The chariot with chess pieces. That's a really good kind of cool way of thinking about it. Because, you know, that chariot is that kind of cool and controlled energy, which chess is very much like that, isn't it? And this is my favourite strength card of all time. So if you saw my 31 Days of Tarot, I talked about this card because the strength card is also my birth card and that is one of the things that I that does slightly irritate me about the deck is that it hasn't got the numbers on the majors which I like and it also doesn't have the names of the suits on the suits it just has the numbers which is a little bit frustrating as you'll see when we get onto it yeah this hermit card I don't love quite so much although I do quite like that it's included uh, possible like hallucinogens and things like that to sort of show that the hermit knowledge is sometimes something that is is kind of involved in trance state and things like that wheel of fortune how cool is that again that's got to be the same artist who did the magician card <laughs> justice so this one is is a it almost jars but this is done it must be by the person who did the sword suit and so you know they they her style is quite different from the other people's style and she's got Mart there, you know, weighing the feather and the heart, which, you know, is cool, but for me it doesn't quite blend in. And that, that is the one thing about having different artists working on a deck is that, you know, they, they, the images don't all necessarily blend in together. But sometimes I found that to actually be helpful in readings because you... It, they do stand out and you think oh okay that stands out why does that stand out and it, it becomes another significator in the reading itself not a significator as in the person but a significant is significant in the reading then hanged man interesting imagery you know the wolf sleeping underneath in there and you know from a right away perspective it's fairly easy to read it like that and you know, if you know the cards already, it's not too much of a departure, but I think it's an interesting enough departure to make you think, which is cool. This is an interesting take on temperance, yeah? You know, you've got the kind of the overworld, the underworld, and it's the same kind of, you know, it could almost twist the other way up. And so it's not just, it's like balancing that unconscious and conscious, the underworld, the overworld, rather than just kind of, dieting and stuff which is sometimes a kind of reading of that card i like how it's almost a shamanic rendition of that card which i love i love that idea of temperance as a shamanic journeying kind of or shamanic balancing and the sh the shaman as being kind of in between those worlds a, he a hedge riding kind of take on that card and this is interesting too yeah i promise i won't <laughs> talk about all of these in great detail but I just think that there is so much in these cards that is so cool like look at this the devil and there's there's the lovers trapped in there you know but are they really you know shells of curiosities is in it is interesting interesting take on things the tower kind of slightly more um realist style I love this star card as well. I was like kind of diving after and look at the face on the star. It's like this way. And it is that again, it's that kind of gnosis, that kind of dreaming. A lot of these cards are kind of images that you might see in your dreams, which I love. The moon card, now I'm not super, I don't super love this moon card, but I do like the kind of shadowy elements of it and the the fact that she's not looking straight at 
up front. Weird, weird take on the sun card, I think, because normally that card I love, uh, I, well, unless it's got a freaky baby on it, but it's, I still, I really like this card, but it, it doesn't seem to have the power because it almost seems like the sun is fading, which for an Astara Tarot, which you would think like the sun is coming in more now, I just think that's kind of an unusual way to do it. And then judgment is kind of a more traditionally take. I do love that world card. I love these, these like bits of the world either kind of breaking off or being pushed back in, you know, completion. The puzzle is finished. I need to start again. And the use of the astrological symbols. And then the first suit, that, and this is how it was arranged when I had it, then it is like this in the book, is wands, which again I think is strange considering for me the swords would be the first suit, but the swords is actually the last suit in the book. I think it's probably also the least strong suit. So, but then, you know, that's a, from my personal taste, because I think obviously that, that artist is not to my personal taste as much as the wands artist who I do, I love. So I, I do love this imagery. This little mouse pops up on the aces as well. Like interesting, look. The person in the cage and the bird on the finger. It's like I want an adventure, but I kind of feel like I can't. I'm trapped in at the moment. And then like frogs also. They obviously, you know, they were in communion with each other. It's a collaborative project. Cause so a lot of the symbolism does overlap in between the suits as well. But yeah, this suit is particularly. And I do find this deck really good for family and relationship readings like not so much like romantic readings but more to do with longer term relationships and family setups and stuff like that there are definitely cards in this deck which pertain to family setups and I do find they come out for that there's also is like a lot of serpent and I do find this kind of a feminine energy deck which I really enjoy it's done in a kind of in a conscious and a beautiful beautiful way I love the kind of layering with the wands and the fishes there as well, which is the kind of fire water, again, you know, played into that kind of divine feminine energy, even within the fiery wand suit. Look at that. <laughs> you know, it's like, keep going, keep going, keep going. It, it, new ways of seeing the cards. And like, you know, okay, traditionally you might want to see um, not a figure on that card, it'd just be the ones kind of shooting off. But, you know, with the eagle and you get that idea of kind of speed and and good foresight, which can be used for. And then kind of slightly sinister nine of wands, as you'd expect. And the ten does look difficult, as you'd expect, you know, trying to kind of care for a whale that has been injured by all these wands. Is, is, the task is, is too much. One person can't hold a whale you know it does put it into that big scale perspective by using the nature images and these courts are my favorite in the these uh, wands courts because <laughs> they're lovely the swords courts are my least favorite but you'll see those at the end and then we've got coins and again the mouse because the mouse is on each of the uh, aces yeah and the frog again turning up in the threes they've used the symbolism like I said they've woven it through with the similar animal imagery in the different numerology so if you're looking at kind of animals and numerology that is here in this deck and you can definitely read those layers of interpretation look how that serpent is there coiled around her leg and you know you almost get that like does she want to go in and be part of this bigger serpent energy or actually is she better off kind of paving her own way and not having to kind of buy into the institution I think it's an interesting read of the five of pence that five of coins <sighs> yeah I love the the elemental uh use in these cards as well and like yeah the use of animals too it's like this one <laughs> the seven of, of uh, coins you know is it's the raccoons obviously that's slightly kind of shifty but then it's that family 
family energy as well and I love that that is you know that owl there toiling making all these gorgeous gorgeous pentacles and then there's also people you know I love that nine of pentacles so this suit is gorgeous and like the sea creatures that they use on the tens is a I, I find it really interesting really fascinating and look that's more of a lovely celebratory family all kind of getting together around the grandfather tell us a story kind of <laughs> kind of completion vibe the adventure is done and now we can we can celebrate and then I like these courts but like you know there's nothing well I suppose there is a coin there is there a coin on here I don't think there's a single well I suppose that is the coin in the moon but it it's tricky sometimes to tell until you've got really to grips with the deck what you know it's, it's it took me a long time I saw look it up to see what these court cards were because they're not always super super obvious okay there is a coin there but then you know there can be these wands here you know it's it's look at that a gorgeous gorgeous queen cutching up with her her little one and then a kind of more frightening kind of king of wands a kind of pan type image with all these riches displayed like take me on if you dare kind of vibe again the eyes kind of kind of golded out that kind of gnosis underworldy kind of vibe and then the cups this is a completely different style but I do still quite like it this figure this whoever this is appears on a lot of these cards and the bird is the mouse in this one? Oh yeah because she's wearing the mouse the mouse kind of mask they obviously did want to make that a thing. And then how gorgeous is this two of cups? These two birds kind of nested up with the little acorn cups and teapot. I just love that. And I love this three of cups. This just is to me, is like goddess immersion in with like-minded, with kindred, all kind of, we all come from the same soup. We're all in this same unconscious, you know, there is one collective unconscious that we are all part of and then it's only our brains which are part which are pointed out and and that is our own our own consciousness but the, the, you know these figures here are part of that deeper reality and the frog is there as a symbol of the unconscious you know is that the frog can go from can live underwater and above water and so can travel between the unconscious and the conscious and i and you know i love I think that card is such a beautiful, beautiful, it's not just got the community aspect, which it does, but it's got that we are all connected as one to it, which is just so clever and so beautiful. I think that is, is this one of my favourite cards in the deck. And then, yeah, look, it's like a nope. <laughs> kind of typical take on that card, and yet it still makes me laugh when it comes up. Yeah, I like this card, which is often like a kind of inner child, innocence kind of thing. And here it's like almost like children trying to tend for this whale, that same whale that pops up in the other in some of the other cards. And but they, it's almost like we can do it. There's enough of us. We can do it. You know that kind of innocence that believes you can, you can do anything. And yeah, <laughs> and this one's interesting as well. You know, it's like the half eagle half person they want to fly away and they've got the wings but they also don't know whether to use them or not you know it's like do I stay or do I go do I be a bird and fly or do I be a human and kind of do the drudging walking interesting take on these cards lots of layers in here and beautiful ten of cups culmination and then the page with the fox. And again, like, you know, okay, there's little cups here. But this tricky to know. Because that, to me, because of the coloration and stuff on that card, I would think, is that the page of wands? And I'd get confused. And again, here, it's, she's sailing, but she's sailing in the sky. You know, there's not obvious cup imagery on there. Perhaps she's in a cup, but, you know, it's, it's ambiguous. So... That is one of the drawbacks, I think, with this deck. But obviously, once you know the deck, that is not a drawback. That's fine. And then Queen under the water. And the King kind of scrying. Again, that kind of gnosis, that trans state in at the end of the cycle, ready to start a new cycle. And then we're into the swords. And like I said, this is my least favourite suit. 
but I still, I still like it. But the artwork on this one is not so much to my taste as some of the other artwork in this deck. Look, the, the mouse has a crown in this one. <laughs> and I love that there's the nest in, the bird is blindfolded. You know, it's, it's just the layers and choice and things of that. And I do like that rather than the stereotypical. You know, it, it's, it's a nicely, even though this is my least favourite, I still like it. <laughs> And I love, I love this for the Four of Swords. I like to think that, that rabbit is sleeping and not dead. And it's like, you know, give yourself a chance to rest. Meditation, you know, that kind of aspect of the card, which is nice. And again, you know, the serpent, it gives, it gives options of different ways of thinking about it. And that serpent again on the five card, you know, they are following through. And then kind of quite traditional imagery then on some on some of the cards and this too you know raccoon again taking the swords <laughs> and the eagle again on the eight blindfolded this eagle's tethered caught but yeah he is actually tethered on that side but you get the impression you know that it wouldn't be so hard for him to slip his hood and get out of there but he he can't see that he can't see that and then you know threatened nine and this one's so so sad that whale impaled with those swords massive massive creature the biggest creature and yet and then these i'm not so fussed on the page the page i don't mind actually the knight super aggressive you know is this is a battle and because the Knight of Swords is my kind of Myers Briggs personality card, I don't identify with that that strongly. Well, not at all, really. Especially with the kind of beer. The... Yeah, it just doesn't really speak to me, that card. This one a little bit more so, with the more kind of inner, inner seeing as well as outer seeing. And again, the King, like a lot of the Kings in this deck, is more we can't see into him <laughs> so yes there was a star at tarot i tried to keep it fairly short i'm hoping it is still under half an hour it looks like it is actually which is cool so yeah but i wanted to give my impressions on this deck i do really really love it if you like thicker card stock and you like shiny edges then this could well be a good deck for you i don't necessarily think that it is a time of year specific deck but what I do like to use it for is family readings my own family readings and readings for other people around kind of family situations and things like that because I think it speaks a lot to that and I do feel like it's got a kind of divine feminine and almost kind of transcendental connection to the unconscious kind of energy going on with it which I really really like so I don't kind of want to leave that card sitting there on the top because that is not one of my faves <laughs> Let's put that instead. So that was it. Thank you so much for watching. Warmest, warmest blessings. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Let me know down below and I will see you very soon. Mm, da, 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 da.